Hi and welcome to the Low Level Devil Channel. In this video I want to cover an object-oriented programming pattern that we will use in several videos. Rather than explain the design in each of those videos, I decided to create a smaller standalone project to demonstrate how to use a simple object-oriented design pattern in C. Some of you familiar with the Linux kernel development will likely recognize this pattern as it's used often in the Linux kernel code base. This is going to be a very simple design. It won't use things like inheritance or polymorphism. Maybe I will do something like that in a future video if I feel though there's a need for it in some of the other projects. Um, in this project, the idea is that we have the need for a logger. And we may have multiple implementations of that logger. Maybe sometimes I want to just simply write to standard output. Maybe other times we'd want to write to files or, or some other thing like maybe HTTP or a socket. Uh, this covers a flexible design that would allow you to develop multiple different implementations and be able to easily plug different implementations into your code without needing to modify your own project's code to use different logger implementations. So let's start with this uh, main log.h header file. Right here you see the main interface, and actually here is the main logger object. I have a type def to it as a logger here. So the main logger object has two, two uh, main parts. It's got an interface, and then it has a void data, void pointer data. So this will be what you have for your own internal implementation of your logger. Um, but the interface is the actual functions that this logger supports. So if you take a look at the this log interface structure, it's got an init. Actually, the first thing you'll notice about each of these functions is that they take a logger object, uh, which we're calling self. Think of it, if you're familiar with object-oriented programming languages like C or Java, think of this as like the this pointer. You're given the this pointer to it. So we're calling it self. And uh, so for instance, init takes in that logger and then the void data to initialize it with. And the info function would be, if you think when you have a logger, sometimes you want to log an info message, sometimes you want to log an error message, and you want to handle those differently. So the info will take in a ch character to character array to write char pointer. Um, and the same for error. And then there's a close method. Uh, when, and when I say method, that, that's because I'm a Java programmer by trade. So uh, in, in Java, you call functions methods. So when I say method, I mean function. So um, let me move on straight on to one of these uh, logger implementations. So in our log h, we have uh, the next one we have is a log console.c. So this would be the console implementation of this logger. So d down at the bottom, we actually define this console interface as a structure. So we set this structure up. Uh, it's actually uh, an instance of that log interface structure. So we set it up. Its init function points to this console in it. Its info points to this console info. And we have error in the close. Close, there's not really anything you need to do because you don't really close the console. And uh, in it, there's not really anything you need to do either, but I'm just, for the sake of doing something, I'm printing out console logger in, our, in it. And uh, actually, this console logger is not even going to use the void data because there's no need for it in this implementation. So the main two ones that we're using here is the console info just does a printf, prints the string with a return after it, and the console error does an f printf to std error because a lot of times you know you print an error you want it going to std error instead of std out so this is a super simple implementation of it and we also have just a global object I know globals isn't really a good thing to do in general but just for the sake of showing you how to use this we'll have a 
a global con log logger. And all that I do when I initialize that is I set its interface to this console interface. And then if you saw in the log.h, I just make that an extern so so that you can call con con log from your code. And now I'll take a look at the log file implementation. Uh, actually we have a, a header for that too, flog.h. And all flog.h does is it includes the log.h header and then it has a function to create a file logger which you can also equate to a constructor if you're familiar with object-oriented concepts so that constructor per se takes in the uh, a logger object that you want to construct and then a file name that you want to relate it to so let's take a look at the implementation for this log file C at the very top we just have the names of the functions defined up here file init, file info, uh, error and close and uh, then we have our log interface object you could call it that we're creating here so uh, the, and then let's see down here a little farther this is actually our data object which this is this goes into the concept of encapsulation it's the hidden implementation details of your uh, logger so our data object that's related to in the log.h this implementation is actually going to be uh, this file log data class or struct um, so let me start with the create function actually so this create function what this does First, it does a malloc and allocates some memory for this file log data, ensures there wasn't any error, and sets the data's file name to the file name passed in, and then calls file init with this impl and data. Technically, you could call file init directly because it's in the interface here, but in general, you would want to use this constructor instead because you this this is supposed to hide the implementation so you don't need to worry about the actual structure that holds all the information needed to manage this file log object so inside the file in it of course it takes that self so on the self we want to set its interface to our file interface so the first thing that we're doing is saying its interface is this and then the data is the data passed in the data object that was passed in so now we're going to cast that data to this file log data um, structure so what we want to do then is set its fd uh, member to the results of f open so that if f open fails for some reason we want to return an error so in our file in it it's going to return basically the error no, the the cause of the f open failure and it does a printf saying you know what it's doing and it prints out the actual return value of the file descriptor so if all goes well just return zero so moving on to the main uh, implementation functions file info each each of these so we file info file error and file close each of these at the top they're going to cast the self data to this file log data structure so all that we're really going to do is invoke fprintf with the file descriptor in the info we're going to print info and then percent s and a return for that string and likewise in the file error we're going to use the same file descriptor but we're going to print error before it and for close all we're just going to do is f close and free that um, that variable that we uh, malloced. Okay, so that that's really a simple implementation for file. You could also create another one of these. Let's say you have a uh, a socket server or something that uh, or 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 so. Yeah, a lot of times you'll have a socket server for a debugger or something like that that you can just send string messages to. So in your init you would connect to that port on that host and then you know your uh, 
info and error would do a uh, send uh, socket call and you would do the same close kind of method socket close in your file close implementation so to a little a little bit to show the usage of this where there's a main.c function uh, skipping right to the main so there to show there's a couple of different ways to use this interface at the at start up here I'm just going to grab the actual log interface from the con log this first sample will just be showing the console how to use the console one just for fun I'm showing you can call in it and it doesn't actually do anything it's not really necessary but you can call this log interface in it pass in the con log the address of it and zero or anything here really since this value is ignored and then there's a couple of different ways that we can use this interface there's the uh, long-winded approach here you can say con log dot interface sorry, dot interface calling the info function passing in the address of con log and then your info message and then the same with an error this is a kind of long-winded approach to calling that you could also use just this log interface like you can see I'm calling C log info and I'm casting the C log to void pointer so instead of actually passing the address of my logger I'm just passing the log interface and the only reason I'm able to do this and it will actually work is because if you look at the logger the very first um, the very first member of our logger structure is the actual interface so for instance if this if, if void was de this void data was declared up here that wouldn't work at all because since this is the first item in your struct the the pointer to the struct also points right to this interface and the pointer to this interface points right to this logger object hopefully you understood that um, so so you know we can use this without having to use multiple different variables and then I created a nice little macro to make it even easier to use I can pass in the address of our con log not actually even do any of this grabbing of the interface the, so this is a e method you can just pass in any logger object the uh, the uh, pointer to it that is and you know right and uh, and the same for e log I have e log and i log and if you look at the implementation of those it's simple you pass in a logger the message it calls the logger interface info passes in the logger and the message so really that's those are really straightforward macros you can create. You could use those in, in your code, for instance. So anywhere you'd pass those in, as long as you passed in a uh, logger pointer, you wouldn't have to modify your code. You would just modify the place where you're passing in the logger to pass in different implementations. And then uh, another quick example just to show how you'd use file loggers. So I have two loggers, F1 and F2. I'm calling file create, pass in the address of F1, and then the file name file1.log. So file log create F2 file2.log. And just again to show the different ways to use it, I'm grabbing the interface and calling F log info ampersand F1. So I'm printing info log message to each of these log files and then uh, doing the same for the error and then I'm showing how to use those in the macros as well so like you can see this macro supports pointing passing in con log passing in your own loggers and all that and then I close those at the end so just to show a quick example let me just make it clean all right if you just run make on this project just it's the sim the make file is super simple it's not complicated or anything just compiles all the C files as this log test application so now I can just run log test you can see it's printing out 
the console logger in it this info and error message one message two and message three and then this file logger in it information which I had it print to the console and you'll see inside here we also have file one and file two dot log so you can cat file one and cat file two just so you can see that this actually works in, in, a, in a real application for instance maybe in your project you have some function that maybe in, ends up invoking lots of other functions and everything so like a void do something and it takes in several things and one of the things it would take in is an actual logger log and then you could do some stuff and then you might want to say an i log and you just say log and then you know uh, part one and then do some more stuff and then i log log part two uh, you know your, your typical code you'd have in here you'd say if something happens then that's an error you could say e log log oops so if you now if you think about this just being some uh, in, you know, entry into some larger application that would use this logger all over the place so when when you would actually invoke that function do something you, you could pass in con log uh, the address of con log and uh, you wouldn't have to modify the implementation to fit different loggers that you want to use so all your code that this would invoke would do whatever and never have to be modified because for instance oh now I want to log it to a file so I just pass the address of F1 and now all those logs are going to go to a file and maybe I would create a new implementation for instance a uh, socket uh, logger or something like that which would have its own file and I could create an implementation for that and then again just create an instance and pass that in here which is one of the nice things about object-oriented design uh, not having to modify your code for different implementations of something that it wants to use so uh, that's pretty much it I just wanted to give you an idea of how this kind of object-oriented pattern works because I'm probably going to use it in several of the projects for instance one of the projects I'm doing some I2C stuff well I2C is really just sending and receiving messages and I want to also show spy and maybe I'll use the same pattern for for a spy interface and a and I2C interface. I, I don't know that I actually will but in case those things come up I don't want to explain all this in the the videos and now I can just point you to this video so you can have an understanding of the purpose of it and everything so I hope you enjoyed this video um, and uh, if you have any questions or you know clarifications you need just go ahead and post comments or join our subreddit and you can ask you know more detailed questions there as well um, so thanks again for watching